Hello, welcome back to my playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3. I hope people are still finding this somewhat interesting. There is a surprising volume of people. Still following this land power effect. Alright. What does... Drop the other. Your artillery unit there. For the moment, use it to keep our defenses against the evil, nasty French strong. Airport capabilities have advanced. Okay, well, these are fairly decent for the moment. I don't know that we're going to research Marine HQs because. I don't have that big a strong idea of having... We'll get some radar going there. And we also have to have the effect happen. As you know, if you've been listening to me, I believe in a strong... Strongly developed nation. Okay, improves our, our organization two tenths of a percent. And I have been learning from some of your, um, some of our kind viewers' uh, suggestions on how better to, to play the game. I'm sort of a slow micro player, but I want to keep this going quickly and keep it interesting while it's at least in the slow build-up phase I don't know that we're gonna keep it going I'm gonna try to go too fast once we get into the combat phase you can see how I like to fight my battles as you can see here now we have, uh, let's just get this out of the way, single engineer frick research. We have Czechoslovakia fully surrounded. Um, there is a possibility when we get this low enough and we decide to move ahead on um, the Sudeten question, there is a possibility that it can go to war. It is more likely to go the historical path, but there is with TRE a possibility of a war. That could really throw things off on this playthrough, but that would be interesting. And we have, of course, the primary German border. Well, he's functionally filled up. If they go to war, we'll be able to handle that. This is our one weak spot up here, which Preferably before we get anywhere too far, we will have that covered. If we have the west wall finished before any fighting, this is strong enough to hold it. With um, just a minor reaction force. I normally like three divisions that sit back along here. As, but we'll see this when things come up. Um, is a reaction force to any pushes 
by the French. Light bomber prototypes have advanced. And something else has advanced. Oh, armor plate thickness is also advanced. See what our other avionics types text there we need to do. Keep up to date there. Oh yeah, armor text. So we've got that. Those are too far in advanced. We will be needing this by the time we're starting to face the, the Soviets. I really wish they could have designed these that had a setting for at need, so they would just float and then dump everything extra into the production queue or any other queue that I so thought we could use. Okay. Let's get a good. group leader here. Since it's a naval bomber, we want to have somebody who, preferably who has naval attack. Uh, I think I just went past it too fast here. Let's see, yeah, fleet your course C. We're going to try not to use these as much as possible. We'll just use a neutral guy here. So you see, we just go there, we see the conditions of all of our seaplane units. Aerodynamics have completed. We'll go with some armor plating for our aircraft. Well, armored HQ is advanced. That is useful. SSHQs. And get those that will give us a Panzer Army. Headquarters had someone asking about that today. Or was it yesterday, I guess? On the message board how to build those. As I've come to learn, if you ever need to know how to do anything, like fix something on your car or whatever else, just go to YouTube and um, search for it, because I... Ah, too many things popping up. Popping up. we have had that need, and it's really been helpful. So, we've lost our high popularity. So if you need to know how to play a game, go to YouTube. Like you may be doing here. bombs. No. Yeah. Six feet. U-boat flotilla. Yes, we want 
with those. Okay, before we go down the next path here. Okay, um, the 10th Party Congress, very good. Give us six more ICs, reduce revolt risk and other lovely things like that. There we go again. All our fighters neatly organized. Okay. This. The Treaty of Munich. The Munich Treaty. Very important thing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to save right here. Because like I said, this could go to war or not, and I wonder which way we should play this out. Um, so we will save it just as a precaution, and I would recommend you, just in case you decide you don't want to fight a war at this point. But this is a risk, so we will we will save. So I remember which one it is if I need to go back and deal with it. Okay. So now, the Munich Treaty. As you may know from watching this, um, Germany has been stoking the fires of unrest in the Sudetenland. Chamberlain rushes to Berchtesgaden because Hitler has been making speeches and other actions that are very incendiary and there's Chamberlain back of Hitler Ribbentrop there so there we gain 15 threat on Czechoslovakia they don't like that then after that meeting there's another one in Bad Gods Bad Godsburg oh whatever um, where they're continuing back and forth um, Chamberlain's flying back to England coming back to Germany trying to solve this Chamberlain Ribbentrop in front of the building there in the city. So, we'll lose a lot of neutrality, we'll gain a bunch of dissent, because this is getting serious. The germ We've already gotten some dissent pop up here. Um, because we are um, threatening to go to war, and the last war didn't end so well for us. Anymore. So the people are... Aware. Okay, so now we've got here. This is the crisis. Chamberlain has met with us. Things are still not going so well. So it's called, Mussolini particularly calls in um, sort of international conference. He, so he comes in with it with the Prime Minister of France all sitting down. There's signatures on the actual thing there. All come in to discuss the fate of Czechoslovakia. You may note, there's no Czechs in the room or at the event anywhere. They were left out of it and we're deciding what's going to happen to their country. As you can see, 80-20% for a war peace here. And it's peace for our time. Uh, so, it's often called peace in our time, but now it, it was, it's peace for our time. And Chamberlain comes back, waves the, the paper um, around. Now, I'll tell you... We've discussed this a little bit on the message board. There was a very real plot um, for a coup against Hitler if the French and the British said they would fight and, you know, declared that they were going to fight. They didn't have to actually start invading or bombing. That, that some of the higher, the high ups in um, the army staff in, in Berlin were going to have a coup against Hitler. Don't know if it would have succeeded or not. Don't know if all the troops in the field would have. It might have ended up in a German civil war. 
that was real but also another very real th and of course the coup plotters could have failed to act that's also very real too that's happened before the other very real thing was is particularly Britain but also France weren't prepared for war at this time they honestly weren't prepared they could have won if I checks would have fought at this point they would have lost but they would have fought if the Poles would have joined in if the Belgians would have co cooperated I don't think Italy would have come into the war at this point because Hitler wasn't strong enough or big enough and had they pushed I think they would have won but Poland wasn't interested in going to war they made no no noises about going to war in fact they were claiming basically this territory here and wanted their piece of the pie of taking taking a part of Czechoslovakia they were sort of on the German side to some some minor degree so this radically reduces our back down our descent level because it's now peace but there's still people are nervous so Hitler rides into the into the state and land big triumphant parade instead of military invasions so Hitler also very much wanted a training war. The whole purpose of the, the Munich crisis, at least as I understand it, and Hitler's push for this, is he wanted a war with Czechoslovakia but keeping France and Britain out of it. So he had to justify his war. Or they might come in, and as he even believed, and, and most of the German um, general staff elements, including the Navy, believed, Germany was not prepared and could not fight a war at this time. So, with France and Britain, because France was looked at to be the greatest military power um, up until 1940 when they proved they weren't. They, everyone, including the Germans, thought they were the greatest military power in Europe or in the world. So, they weren't prepared for a war with France, but they were prepared for a war with Czechoslovakia. Hitler doesn't get this. He gets this without a war. He also sees this as the mistakenly believes that the Western democracies won't fight unless directly attacked. As will be seen over Poland, so he mistakenly believes that. Which has good and bad consequences for the future. We regained high popularity because we have successfully shown our diplomatic skills and that we can stand up to the West. Gun positions and twin engine planes have advanced. That's here. And we'll get that because we've got the extra slot there from high popularity. Graf Zeppelin 2 is launched. Like is the earlier events, we have it filled with hydrogen, unfortunately not helium, so we cannot use it as a commercial vessel flying passengers around. No one's going to fly enough flying hydrogen bomb. Vadelsberg SS leaders headquarters. Himmler wants his mystical headquarters um, and wants to renovate it so that'll cost us a little bit of money keep. Himmler happy. Since we're still at peace we need to pay the Ascari pensions. Ah, national prize for this year um, Ferdinand Porsche, Tote, um, and uh, no, that's Willie Messerschmitt, isn't that? Fritz Tote, I think it's Willie Messerschmitt. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who these people are. So I don't. Oh, that was. Mm, sorry. Get a little bit of gain in a bunch of areas, return manpower to the pool. Alright, and we have some destroyers. We're going to set this into the Craig's Marine so called main flotilla here. Where is that? There we go. Let's look at our production. Okay, we need to increase some of our production sections here. More infantry. Do another semi-motorized unit. 
the new divisional planner for um, Hearts of Iron 4 I think is a good thing. It, we don't get the chance to, to play around with battalions like or brigades or whatever like we do here. But I think on, a, on the whole it is good. better than what we've currently got. Get some more radar in line here. these things. They produce fast. We're going to produce two more of these as well. They're increasing our practicals and I'll later show you how I like to use those in some secret operations that can have a significant effect. No smoking? What? In government buildings? The Nazis cared about the health of the right type of people. Not everybody's health, but the right type of people. They genuinely cared. But they were a progressive state, so they wanted to make laws and rules and regulations to help people be better. So, good for the health, bad for freedom. Medium bomber prototypes have advanced. Yes. Money for some rares, yeah. <whistles> Ammunition capacity has advanced. Dr. Luntz Heck, very interesting personality, um, head of the Berlin Zoo, other, other enterprises. Um, people might be interested in looking him up. Okay, he wants to go to Africa to collect more um, zoological samples for the Berlin Zoo. Um, and we can send some of the right type of assistance down to Southwest Africa down there, so that might help us out a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why these things aren't... something, I don't know. That's why we don't have another free slot. Ah, oh, the Schleswig Holstein. Um, we have an opportunity to send that on a um, showing the flag uh, training cruise, which will help our battleship crew training as well. 
put a bunch of cadets and others on board. Yeah, we'll send her off to, to Latin America there. Real historical. Cruise it, they did. No, South Africa. Oh, we're making enough money, we got plenty. There. Okay. Now. We want to... Make sure we have enough units in East Prussia. He's too good of a general to be there. Send him over there. I don't know what a, what's with this Reichman fellow. He seems to be the AI's most popular guy. Since I don't use him, he's constantly being put forward for for position. I don't know whether they coded it somehow or something, but we're gonna send him over here because I want to pick up the HQ. Okay, some subs. I'm currently putting them in two boat units, or two quadrants, squadrons, or groups, or whatever. Okay, we, because of what they are, I want a... These aren't so, mu so much um, bad commanders as inexperienced is the, the theory behind these. So they will get experience over time if they survive. Gunner, like Gunnar Preen, he was a good commander. semi-motorized division. We're going to put him right here. There's various improvements. We need to do that. We're going to crank through this quicker now because Okay, we need to start building some other stuff. Looks to be more aircraft. No, I don't do this scientifically. I get instinct. Maybe I just sort of keep track of it all in my head somehow. Without really trying. Okay. useful level because now we can machine gun cannon combos in aircraft. Let's ask it for the light bombers. Mainly I'm just doing it to show you if we got these. This improves our 
Air attack even though it has opened up a slot too, so... Now that we're getting closer to here... These things will upgrade on subs where these won't, so that's why we sort of backed off on studying them there for a while. I already have a set of two on the board, on the board there. I sort of like them in groups of four. We will add two of these. Germany will be operating a lot of coastal vessels for the campaign, so these things are quite useful. Uh, we will also go with a big expensive division here. Okay, that will give us a fairly decent division here. Motorized AT tanks just, especially by the time you get to the Soviets, armor isn't going to be enough, at least in my previous run-throughs of... I've not run through in this, this version of Black Ice. I got up to, uh, with 7.54 or whatever, um, I got up to just sort of starting... Um, getting ready to start the, the war with the Soviets, but didn't actually start it. Getting close to that. So I haven't tried it, but in the previous versions you needed either anti-tank or good AA guns that have good killing power by the time you go into there. Okay, we'll do that here. Okay, well you've stolen some British blueprints, and I think we'll also stop this session here at the moment once we get this... Okay, Heavy Bomber Prototype to level 3. Let's take a quick look at what we've got with that. So we are now Heavy Bomber Prototype to level 3. So we've radically improved our Heavy Bombers without having to do the Intermediate. That is a, somewhat of a weakness of this system, if you will. Because if we ever want to catch up, we have to catch these up, I guess. It's good and bad. I do like... I mean, trust me, I like it more than I saw. So I love a lot, like a lot, and only dislike a little bit of what happens with Black Ice. So, um, we'll end this session here.